Minerva. Hello. How are you feeling today? You feeling good? Hello and welcome to Spencer's Library. I'm Claudia and this is my wrap up for January. I have to say that this has not been the strong start to my reading year that I was hoping for mostly because the books that I read were a bit disappointing. I ended up DNFing two and only one of the books that I read this month was a book that I actually enjoyed. But before we get into the uh, disappointing reads, uh, let's start with my usual small booktuber shoutouts, in which I recommend to you three channels with under 500 subscribers that you should really check out this month. The first shout out goes to a lovely jaunt. This channel is run by Alexandra, who has a really interesting and unique way of running a booktube channel. She creates lecture style analytical uh, book discussions that are organized into series. Each series deals with a particular book or theme, most of them so far related to classics, and each episode in the series goes deep into one aspect of that book or topic. At the moment, for example, she is discussing The Tenant of Wildfell Hall by Anne Bronte, which was one of my favourite reads of last year. And she does that in a very thoughtful way and with a huge amount of research and planning. The second shout out goes to the channel Miss Coco Chen, run by Coco, who also takes a very innovative but very different approach to booktube. I first came across her via her 30 second book summaries and 30 second reviews. Yes, you heard that right. She manages to summarize a novel in a 30 second video and then reviews it in another 30 second video and reviews it very eloquently and skillfully and with a ton of personality. If you're short on time but you still want a well-rounded book review, go check her out. And the final shout out goes to Amber from Amber Unabridged. Her channel name is very fitting for what she does because her videos tend to be fun, chatty, casual and almost like a conversation with a friend. Her reading tastes are super varied in terms of genre and format and she's also into Doctor Who like me and sometimes discusses Doctor Who related books and other content which is awesome because Doctor Who literature is not talked about enough on booktube. So if you like relaxed chatty and nerdy videos then have a look at her channel and her videos. All three channels that I've talked about are of course linked in the description box and I urge you to go check them out and maybe you'll find a new channel to subscribe to. Okay, let's get to the books. I read three books this month and DNF'd two, which is very unusual for me and that makes my average star rating a rather disappointing two stars. The two books that I DNF'd were both books that had been sitting in my good reads a currently reading list for months but that I haven't actually touched in ages and decided to take out of that limbo and just get rid of them. The first book is The Ode Less Travelled by Stephen Fry. This is a sort of beginner's guide to writing poetry and while I fought my way through the first chapter I realised that I really have no interest whatsoever in writing poetry. I have since gifted that book to a friend who will hopefully find it more useful than I did and appreciate it a lot more. The second book I DNF'd was the Kindle edition of The Heart of Midlothian by Walter Scott, which I intended to read as part of my 1818 project last year, but I just couldn't make my way through it. I found this book confusing and complicated and it just wasn't fun, so I gave up on it. Now the first book I actually finished this month, and I guess this year, was Marco Polo by John Lucarotti. Uh, this is the novelization of a Doctor Who episode from 1964 and it's one of the so-called missing episodes from Doctor Who history. The BBC used to just overwrite old tapes of their TV shows after the TV show was broadcast. Uh, so unfortunately there is no surviving recording of this very early episode and that makes it, this book one of the only ways to actually enjoy the story. I've owned this book for many years and I can't actually remember where I got it from but I did learn that this is the very first novelization of any Doctor Who episode so I was very much intrigued by it. 
The novelization was also written by the same author who wrote the TV episode script itself. So I assume that it is very faithful to the original story, but unfortunately that means that it's just not a very good novel. Stories just need to be told differently across different media, and something that works as a seven-week serial on TV just doesn't work once you write it up in the form of a short novel or novella. Anyway, this story follows the Doctor and his first three companions, teachers Ian and Barbara and his very own granddaughter Susan. They land their damaged TARDIS in the Himalayan steppes. As they soon find out, they ended up in the late 13th century and run, of course, into Marco Polo, who looks a little bit like Elvis on this cover. He is on his way to see the leader Kublai Khan with his caravan, which includes the teenager Ping Cho, who's on her way to get married, and Tigana, who's an evil scheming warlord. Sounds pretty typical for a classic Doctor Who episode, and it is. There follows a series of thwarted plans, murders, kidnaps, and various people trying to steal the TARDIS. The writing style is, well, it's not great, and the author doesn't seem to have mastered the art of perspective and description in the medium of the written word, and the style is pretty uninspired too. It's just not a very pleasurable read, and therefore I have to give this book just two stars. If you're a massive Doctor Who fan and you've heard the legends around this particular TV episode, then sure, go ahead and read it. But if you're also after a well-written little adventure story, then you will be disappointed. Next, I finished Robinson Crusoe by Daniel Defoe. I read this as part of my Four Centuries project in which I read four books from four centuries. This was the first one chronologically, because it was published in 1719. I have already uploaded my review video for this, and you can find that linked up here and in the description box if you want the full review, which I highly recommend because I had a lot to say about that video. It was a very complex book with lots to talk about, and in this video I am just going to briefly summarise my opinion of it. Overall, I was surprised by Robinson Crusoe. I don't know what I was expecting, but it wasn't quite that. We all know the basic story. English guy gets shipwrecked, ends up on a remote island where he survives for decades while fighting off so-called savages and acquiring a slave called Friday. First of all, I was surprised by how readable this book was. I thought with it being 300 years old that the style would be a lot more antiquated than it was, that the language would be more difficult and the flow of the story slow and boring, but actually it was a lot more accessible than I thought. Though I should mention that I listened to the audiobook, which was narrated by the wonderful Simon Vance, fast becoming a favourite of mine, who makes even the longest sentences sound easy and conversational. If you are at all interested in reading this and you have an Audible subscription, then I would highly recommend getting this on audiobook. I don't know that I would have found it that easy to get through on paper. The other things that surprised me were the themes of spirituality and religion, which played a huge part in the story and make this into more of a moral tale than a pure story of adventure. Overall, I found this book incredibly interesting, uh, both as a story, as a novel, but also as a document of its time and place. Of course, this is not a perfect book, especially considering the time and place and the moral and political issues that go with it. But my ratings are based on how much I enjoyed the reading experience, so I gave this book four stars. The third and final book that I finished in January was Changeling by Philippa Gregory. I picked this up in a charity shop after people recommended her books for historical fiction and historical mystery, though the cover of this looks weirdly fantasy-like, doesn't it? And the title as well, Changeling, uh, it doesn't really sound like the title of a pure historical fiction, but it is. Uh, this one particularly appealed to me because it's historical fiction aimed at young adult readers. And I used to love YA historical fiction 
growing up in Germany. I feel like pure historical fiction without any fantasy elements is more of a of a niche genre in the English speaking literary world, but in Germany it's a really big deal, at least it was when I was growing up. Uh, the setting and idea of this are both very interesting. The two main characters are a young Italian monk named Luca who is tasked by the church to travel through the country and investigate instances of suspected corruption and moral depravity. And the other one is a young noblewoman called Isolde who is put into a convent by her greedy brother after the death of their wealthy father. After her arrival in the content, strange things start to happen and Luca is sent there to investigate. Sounds quite intriguing, right? Unfortunately, this book was so, so badly written that I just couldn't enjoy any of it. The characters are flat, boring and unimaginative and the plot was so obvious that even my cat could predict the solution of the so-called mystery if she could read. The plot was oddly paced and the individual parts did not link together at all. This was such a frustrating book to read because it contained the spark, the kernel, the very idea of a very good novel, but the execution was just horrendously bad. I did make it through to the end and therefore I give the novel two stars. But don't bother reading it honestly, there are much better historical YA books out there I'm sure. So that was my slightly depressing wrap up for January. My aim for February is to pick books from my TBR that I have more confidence in to begin with, uh, books that are not as experimental maybe, books that are more inside of my comfort zone. As for my curated bookshelf tally, out of the five books that I read or DNF'd this month, three were paperbacks. One of these I have already given away to a friend and the other two will be unhauled as well. One book was a Kindle edition and one was an audiobook, so I'm adding zero books to my bookshelf downstairs. I also picked two books off my TBR and added no books to my TBR, so my overall unread book balance is minus two. My non-book favourite of the month is one I am very excited to talk about and it has to be my shiny new camera right there. So I saved up for months to buy this and I'm so, so happy with it. It's a Canon M50, which is a mirrorless camera. Um, and I've mostly been using it to film YouTube videos and take cat pictures for my Instagram account. I'm still very much learning how to use this because I've actually never owned a real camera before. So at the moment I'm mainly using the automatic modes on it. Although I have been experimenting a little bit with the manual modes and you know, the many function that this camera comes with. It's definitely a learning process. If you are after a new camera for your own YouTube channel, I can highly recommend the M50. It has two important features that make filming yourself for YouTube so much easier. The first one is the um, screen that you can flip around completely. So there is the lens and there is the screen and I can see myself and make sure that I am in frame and that I am in focus. And the second one is an external microphone port that I can use to plug in my little lapel microphone right here. So you're not limited to using the inbuilt microphone of the camera itself. It is an expensive camera, although from what I've seen, as far as cameras go, it's not that expensive, but it is still an expensive object to buy. I paid £600 for it new. So it's certainly not a cheap piece of equipment and certainly not one that is actually strictly necessary to make good YouTube content. Uh, but I indulged myself and I'm really happy that I did. I'm really glad that I bought this and I hope this camera will serve me a very long time. By the way, if you are interested in this camera, um, I will put a link in the description box, but be aware that that will be an affiliate link. So just be aware of that. Right, that is all for my wrap up in January. Let me know if you've read any of the books that I've talked about. Um, let me know what you think of my shiny new camera and the higher quality videos that I've been able to film with it. Thank you for watching. Bye.